a big adventure bike with a shaft drive and a 30 litre fuel tank. Sound familiar? The Triumph Tiger 1200 GT Explorer, the top of the range version of the British manufacturer's flagship adventure bike. And it was overhauled last year with the BMW R 1250 GSA firmly in its sights. The GT Explorer version of the Tiger 1200 will set you back £18,495 and it's built around this 1,160cc inline liquid-cooled triple engine. Now that makes 148 brake horsepower at 9,000 RPM and 130 Newton meters of torque at 7,000 RPM. Now this bike being a premium machine is laden with technology which includes semi-active suspension which adjusts as you ride and that'll give you 200 millimeters is worth of trouble at front and back. We also have 19 inch front and an 18 inch cast alloy wheels clad in Metzella Torrance tyres and they have twin disc Brembo's up front and a single at the rear. Now it's a top of the range or close to the top of the range bike so we have technology including adaptive radar cruise control, blind spot indicators, heated seats for you and a pillion, and heated grips. We have hill hole control, tire pressure monitoring systems, adaptive headlights, and so on. Let's see how all this combines as we go for a ride. So we have the Triumph Tiger 1200 GT Explorer. And the name Tiger is it's steeped in adventure biking history as any Africa Twin, Tenere, or GS. It actually predates all of those bikes. The, uh, the first Tiger came on sale in 1936, if you can believe it. And it was very different to the big adventure bike that I'm riding today. But uh, Triumph released uh, a series of single cylinder machines. I think uh, a 250, a 350 and a 500, if I uh, remember correctly. Um, and yeah, the, the Tiger name has stayed in the uh, Triumph lineup over the years. But I think probably the Tiger earned its adventure biking chops in, well, in the 1970s, because late in 1973, a, a journalist called Ted Simon took off on an adventure around the world, which would see him travel for four years. And when he returned, he wrote a book called Jupiter's Travels, which has gone on to be a, a hugely successful bestseller. Uh, it's a bike that inspired me, inspired my dad, uh, and I'm sure has inspired plenty of you to swing your leg over a motorcycle and go and explore. If you haven't read it, I would highly recommend it. And Ted was riding a Triumph Tiger, but again, it wouldn't have been, it would, didn't look like the adventure bikes that you find today. Now, Triumph's first attempt at creating what we might see as a modern adventure bike was in 1981 when it created the Tiger Trail. Uh, and it made this bike, it was really mainly in response to the success of the BMW R80 GS, despite getting some pretty poor reviews. Uh, that bike captured people's imaginations. Unfortunately, the Tiger Trail wasn't so successful and it went out of production a couple of years later. Now in the 90s, Triumph revived the Tiger name and produced what you would imagine to be an adventure bike. We actually had a 1996 Tiger 900 in the offices this week. We were doing a classic adventure bike review in Adventure Bike Rider magazine. And that bike really was uh, a great piece of machinery. When you think of its age, um, it really does did stand up to today's bikes. Obviously, it doesn't have the creature comforts or the performance, but I would have absolutely happily jumped on it and disappeared off over to France and beyond. But what do I have below me now? History lesson over. Well, the GT Explorer is the top of the range version of the new Tiger 1200 that is 
more road focused. There is a more off-road focused bike, the Rally Explorer, which will set you back a bit more money. And I'd say that is the, the flagship machine in the lineup. But this bike is pretty much the same, apart from uh, the Rally Explorer has got spokes, larger wheels. It's got a bit more ground clearance and they tweak the suspension uh, to give it some more suspension travel for to be more suitable for off-road riding. Well, you know, if you're brave enough to take a bike that weighs over 250 kilograms off-road. So last year, Trout introduced this new range of Tiger 1200s and it was about time because the previous incarnation was getting a bit long in the tooth. So even though this bike, the Tiger 1200, shares the same name as the previous models, uh, although before that it was called the Explorer, it is a completely different bike. Triumph designed a new machine from the ground up. The old bike, while I do have a soft spot for it, it was a bit of a bloater, it was top heavy, um, and it was aging in comparison to the competition. Although I did actually take it over to Ireland one summer, um, and that bike was, was a real joy, just cruising along at speed on motorways, a beautifully smooth triple engine front Triumph would purr away, and it was supremely comfortable. But anytime you were doing slow maneuvering or if you took the bike off road, um, oh my God, it was top heavy and quite keen to topple over. I remember bouncing over a couple of green lanes in the island more in hope uh, than with any kind of level of skill or intention about where I was going. But anyway, Tramp completely redesigned this bike last year. Um, so it's worth bearing in mind if you are looking at a secondhand Triumph that um, you will have a very, very different machine depending on what year you go for. So this GT Explorer, this Tiger 1200 GT Explorer I have below me, it's 25 kilograms lighter than the old models. Uh, it's got a new engine, a new chassis, uh, new dash, new, pretty much new everything. And you know what? That is all for the better. Apart from maybe one aspect, which I'll touch on a bit later. And there's no getting away from the fact that this bike has been designed to tempt people who might be buying a GS and a GS Adventure. Now this GT Explorer that I have here boasts a 30 litre tank. While the motorcycle has a 30 litre fuel tank, a shaft drive, off-road capability, but is it designed for sort of long distance adventure touring? Yes, the BMW GS Adventure. Now this isn't going to be a comparison vlog about the two bikes, although I will mention it <laughs> because I uh, I rode the GS Adventure as a long-term review bike last year, covered about 10,000 miles, um, did a tour of Europe and had a wonderful time. And it really is a fantastic machine. So Triumph have had their work cut out to create a bike that could tempt people not to buy a GSA. There we go, open her up. Oh, that tiger's got a lovely ground, it really has. Okay, let's uh, get back to below the speed limit. Now, in terms of looks, uh, it's reminiscent of the Tiger 900, which Triumph gave an overhaul to a couple of years before their big bike. And I think they've done a good job. I admit, when I asked people in the office what they thought of the looks of the, uh, of the Tiger 12, People nodded. They gave kind of a, an approving look on their faces. It's not a bike that particularly stands out as being absolutely gorgeous in the way, say, a Ducati Multistrada would, but it's a fine looking machine. It's rugged, it's got some nice angular lines, and overall, I think Triumph have done a, a, a decent job with the styling. It just might not be one of those bikes that you, you stop, look back, look back again when you walk away from but it's a nice looking machine so if i was on uh, a launch of a, a new motorcycle abroad somewhere i've just ridden out the hotel with uh, a bunch of other journalists ready for a day's ride at this point early on in the uh, in the journey i will be thinking about the bike's comfort ergonomics taking a look at the switch gear things like that just getting used to the machine so let's do that now so in terms of the seating position well it is very comfortable you know I, i'm i'm pretty upright i've got a nice uh, nice relaxed reach to the nice wide handlebars uh 
and my leg bend angle is it's more acute than you'd find say on an Africa Twin or even a GS Adventure um, but it's not bent too much. Now one thing I did notice uh, from jumping on the Tiger 1200 compared to the GSA and the Africa Twin actually which I, I rode a little while ago um, is the fact that as with Tigers in the past you are pitched a little bit further forward than you might find on some other adventure bikes. Now this certainly isn't a sporty position, far far from it, it is comfortable, but it is sporty uh slightly. Um, yeah, you do find your your lent a little bit further forward, there's a little bit of a, a bend in my elbows, there's slightly more pressure on my wrists than I would find on some other adventure bikes, but I'm, I'm talking slightly, it is a very comfortable bike to ride. Let's open the engine up again. <laughs> yeah, it certainly picks up. We're just pumped on that. It certainly picks up and we'll uh, talk about that in a minute. But no, in terms of comfort, I am more than happy to be sat here and I'd like to carry on for the rest of the day. The seat is wide, it's comfortable. Um, you know, Triumph have created a position that you would happily sit in cruising along French toll roads as you go to the Alps and beyond. Now, despite the fact this is the more road-focused version of the uh, of the flagship Tiger 1200, um, it's still a relatively tall bike. Uh, now, I'm uh, six foot or thereabouts, and I'm still not quite getting my feet flat on the floor, which is unusual for a road-biased version of a machine. Now, I would expect the off-road biased bike, the, the Rally Explorer, to be taller uh, for me to struggle to get my feet down for that extra ground clearance that Triumph reckons people want if they're riding off-road. Um, usually the road bias versions are a bit shorter and this is but maybe because of the position of the pegs but when I put my legs on the ground um, they naturally splay out if you can see naturally splay out to the side of the pegs um, rather than going straight down. Basically means my feet aren't flat footing. Uh, it's not particularly a deal breaker to me because they're close enough but if you are a shorter rider it may give you food for thought. So the seat height can be adjusted between 850 and 870 millimeters um, but it is also actually quite narrow at the front without losing comfort to help you get your feet down on the ground. Kind of wish I could but hey it is what it is. Now in terms of weather protection I've got this nice big screen up front and Triumph along with Ducati do the best adjustable screens around on motorcycles at the moment. You just push it down with one hand or lift it up. There's no faffing around. There's no getting off the bike to try and adjust it. Uh, and I have to admit, it's something that it has got over the GS, which uh, has a quite fiddly knob that you have to play with over here. Whereas I really like this system. It's only a small point, but if you are cruising along day after day on tour, which I enjoy doing, being able to adjust your screen a little bit when it's really hot I want it down to try and let some air flow at me when it's raining I want as much coverage as possible and in bad weather this tank up here and the fairing does provide a good amount of weather protection <laughs> it is a 30 litre fuel tank so it should do but I have to admit it doesn't feel like a big top heavy bike with 30 litres of fuel up top um, it's kind of hidden quite well but yeah I've got lots of nice protection I've got hand guards everything you need really for traveling long distances at speed on an adventure bike so as we go around this roundabout it's uh, an opportunity to have a little look at the switch gear now this is uh, a premium motorcycle it's going to set you back more than 18,000 pounds which is a huge amount of money for a bike so you're going to have all the bells and whistles all the accessories all the creature comforts sometimes that can mean the switch gear gets very cluttered but actually Triumph have done a really good job here I'm a huge fan of the way they've laid out all the switches and it's something that really does bug me on some bikes is it's not being able to intuitively know where the buttons are or what does what I have to scroll through god knows how many menus to just try and get my heated grips on um, so what do we have well we have simple chunky buttons 
the thing I probably like the most about them is their back lit. So at night time, you've got a wonderful orange glow. I really would like to see this on more motorcycles. It may seem like a luxury, but when you're riding at night, as I was the other night, in freezing fog, visibility was low. Um, I was riding a motorcycle that I'm not particularly familiar with, having those backlit controls showing me where various uh, controls were was a godsend it really was so top marks for triumph for that now you can access the menu by touching this little joystick here there i've got my uh telling me how much fuel i've got left touch the home button takes me back if i touch the home button again it takes me there so there's various different things what i do like though is triumph have included buttons for certain things that you're going to use a lot of the time so unlike on some other bikes i don't need to scroll through the menu to find the heated grips i've got the button just here on the grip and i'm going to turn them on because it's quite cold today um, also for the heated seat oh man i adore heated seats okay they might feel like you wet yourself a little bit but um, in weather like this when i've been commuting daily on a 60 mile round commute a heated seat has proved a godsend and i've just touched this button and you can see on the dash hopefully there's a little heated seat and a little heated grip icon it's just really simple layout of the switch gear that's just easy and quick to use um, and i like it it's that usability if i want to change the mode i just change the mode button i don't have to scroll through a menu and when it's up on the screen i can go from sport to rider, to rain, to road, and so forth. Hit the menu, come back. And I love this little graphic, I really do. Some people might see it as an overkill, but I really like the fact, it's called a furnace, and I like the fact you have that quite cool orange glow as it changes on the screen. Now talking of the TFT display, I really like what Triumphs have done with that on. So, get past these vans and I'll do the TFT again. Now talking of the TFT display, I really like what Triumph have done. It's large, um, it's really easy on the eye, it's very nicely designed and I like the way they've used the graphics. It's intuitive to cast your eye over to find the information you want. Uh, and I really like the, uh, the way the, uh, the little dial changes. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, TFT again, Dad. I'm talking the TFT again. I'm talking of the TFT display. I really like what Triumph have done with it. Um, it's attractive. It's intuitive to cast your eye over and find the information you want. Um, I'm not overloaded with numbers and flashing gizmos and things like that. It really is a nice, nice piece of kit that you'll find on this bike. Now, I haven't always been a fan of uh, Triumph TFTs. I think the one on the Tiger 900 is a little bit uh, of an overkill, a little bit information or graphic overload, but this is really useful. I like the black background, I like the red colorway. They call it furnace. You can choose between a couple of different colorways, but it's, it's a quality piece of kit. Uh, and as well as I'm talking about technology, I might as well head on over to these bad boys. Now, not the mirrors, although the mirrors are fantastic. I might look like they've come off a car a little bit, but they're big, they're chunky, they're wide. They give you a fantastic view of the road behind. There's a little bit of vibration in them you might pick up in the camera. You might not. Um, but they're very good pieces of kit. But if you spot this little, what looks like a, a reflector on the mirror, or a, a reflector facing the wrong way, it's not in fact. This is the blind spot indicator. Now it's a piece of tech that we've been seeing more and more on high-end bikes, and I can't wait for it to filter down through to more affordable machines, to be honest with you, because um, it's a great piece of technology. So. It's linked to a radar system that detects if there's a car overtaking you in your blind spot and it flashes. So you'll see it flash here when I pass this car. There you go. So it lets me know it's on the inside. And then the one on the right will let me know if there's a car overtaking on the outside. When I first heard read about the tech, 
um, I thought was a little bit of a gimmick. Why do you need that on a motorcycle? But actually, I've used it on a couple of the bikes now, and it's incredibly helpful. It's reassuring, particularly in low light conditions, low visibility conditions. Um, it's not something that has replaced my shoulder check and my mirror check, certainly not. But it's just an added layer of security. And I do like the fact on motorways, it has allowed me uh, to know that there are cars approaching when I wouldn't have checked, you know, because there's no reason to. It just gives me better awareness of what's around me, even if I'm not worrying about changing lanes. So riding up here, coming up to the Ragley Hall Estate, if you can uh, see it over there, which is the, uh, the location for the greatest adventure biking festival ever held, the Adventure Bike Rider Festival. And I'll just stop for a moment take a little cruise past the gates and I have to admit I always love cruising past here because in summer this place is alive with adventure bikes adventure bikers non-stop action and entertainment it really is a fantastic event uh, there's still tickets available for this year um, and it's on the 23rd to the 25th of June just head over to www.abrfestival.com uh, and make sure you'll get your tickets because every year they sell out and it is a truly amazing event. It's like Glastonbury with adventure bikes, posh toilets and hot showers. Test ride all the latest bikes, non-stop action and entertainment, superstars of the adventure biking world. I could go on and on, but I won't because this is a first ride of the Tiger 1200. Um, so I was talking about the blind spot indicators also linked to that radar technology is the bike's cruise control which gives you uh, adaptive route cruise control or radar assisted cruise control or whatever you like to call it uh, what this does is basically means that once you set your cruise control speed so I was setting it to 52 miles an hour what I'm doing at the moment the radar detects how far away the car in front is and if you uh, get a little close to it it will automatically slow the bike down if the car in front then decides to accelerate more it will automatically speed the bike up to that 52 miles an hour again um, it's a really great piece of technology now i don't find myself using cruise control in the uk too much uh, mainly because the roads are so busy that i'm switching it on and off all the time i've found with the radar assisted cruise control um, that i'm using it a lot more still not something would ever be a deal breaker for me when buying a bike but it's now the sort sort of technology that you'd expect uh, on a motorcycle that's costing you more than 18,000 pounds you know even though it's been around in the car industry for many years for motorbikes it's a uh, premium tech on a premium bike so um, to see it on the Tiger is well truly it's something that I would expect to see now so speaking of technology what else do we have on the Tiger 1200 well pretty much everything you can think of that you might find on a premium priced adventure bike tire pressure monitoring systems hill hole control uh, semi-active suspension which adjusts the uh, the ride to the, the road's conditions we've got the various rider modes road rain sport and more um, it is just fully laden with tech now it might not be something that appeals to you but if you're paying this amount of money for a bike, I would expect to see all these things on it and Triumph have delivered, they really have. So technology aside, let's talk about this bike's engine. It's a 1,160cc power plant that makes 148 brake horsepower and 130 newton meters of torque. And being a Triumph Adventure bike, it is a three cylinder triple, but not as you might know it. Now, I love Triumph triples. I love the Suki Smith character that they have. Uh, and I spent a wonderful year on a Tiger 800 once and enjoyed every second. But what Triumph have done is introduce what they call a T-play crank and a different firing order into this engine. Their aim was to give it the, the character and, and some of the vibration and talk of a twin, as well as having that high-end glorious wonderfulness that you get from a triple um now it is a great engine open it up and it rockets up the road uh, and i've enjoyed riding it but i have to admit swinging my leg over a triumph adventure bike with a triple engine 
there's something strange about not having that silky smooth engine. Uh, Triumph must have done market research, they must have discovered that potential buyers wanted what they delivered for them to do it. But for me, it kind of feels like something's missing. That triple engine would have been a reason I bought the bike. And now it's just another bike that feels a bit like a twin. Now, please don't say I'm, I'm complaining about the engine on this bike because it's great. But yeah, it's just a little bit sad that I don't have that silky smooth power delivery. But there you go. It's progress. The world moves on. Now, I've criticised the previous incarnation of the Tiger 1200 for being a top-heavy beast. And it's tricky for Triumph, because unlike the BMW GS with its uh, low-slung boxer cylinder heads sticking out either side of the bike, or even the likes of the, the parallel twin that you find on uh, the Honda or Africa twin, um, a triple naturally carries its weight higher up. So Triumph have had to think hard and uh, come up with some pretty innovative solutions and used all their engineering excellence to create a bike that doesn't feel as top heavy as the previous Tiger 12. And they've done, <laughs> they've done a, an excellent job. Um, you know, riding this bike, yes, it doesn't feel balanced in the same way that a GS does with that weight load down. Um, but I certainly don't feel like I'm riding a top heavy machine. It's well balanced, it's nicely planted on the road, uh, and it's quite happily being slung through corners. I have to admit, I think they've done a, a cracking job. The one thing you will find though, is that the engine does have a little bit of a buzz to it. And you do feel uh, higher revs than I know, probably between four and 5,000 revs, particularly at motorway speeds, that you get a bit of buzz of vibration through the pegs and through the handlebars. It's not too intrusive, but it's there. And it's something, it's certainly worth experiencing if you, uh, if you go on a test ride to feel if it's something that, you know, you're happy living with on a bike. And one of the big selling points of the, uh, the Tiger 1200 and the GS is the fact that they have got a shaft drive. Now, if you don't mind lubing, adjusting, replacing the chain and sprockets, then um, it might not be a big deal for you. But I do know that there are a lot of people out there who just don't want the hassle of doing that. And having a shaft drive machine, particularly if they cover big distances on tour, is a real bonus for them. And some people won't consider a bike without it. Now, uh, with this in mind, the Tiger ticks that box. But one thing I do notice with the shaft drive is when it comes to the power delivery, I do get a little bit of a jolt. And there's a car a little close to behind me to do this. Well, if I come off the power, go on it again. There is a little bit of a jolt as the shaft drive kicks into action. Again, not too intrusive, but at lower speeds, I have found it there as well. Um, things can get a little bit choppy. There you go, it's a characteristic of this bike. But I do really enjoy riding it. You know, today's not probably the best day to be slinging a 250 plus kilogram motorcycle around muddy, slippery lanes that have been churned up by, uh, by tractors. There's <laughs> a lot of mud on this road. Um, but the bike's nicely balanced, it's confidence inspiring, and it's just a for a big machine, and it always actually, I don't know why it surprises me, but it always impresses me is probably the word, for, for big machines, how easy these big adventure bikes are to ride, because, you know, compared to other types of bike, they do carry their weight high. They are tall, but they're just so wonderfully engineered. But threading my way through a few country lanes on a slippery surface on a pretty cold day, although it's six degrees now. It was zero when I left home this morning. Um, yeah, is is a, a joyful experience. It really is. Now I touched on the bike's uh, suspension earlier, which is electronically controlled. Um, and adjust depending on what mode you're in. So at the moment I'm just in standard road mode. Uh, 
and that alongside with rain kind of gives you a little bit more of a plusher ride prioritizes comfort if you uh, pop the bike into sport which sharpens up the throttle response uh, it also firms up the suspension and makes everything a bit tighter uh, a bit more agile um, but one thing I'm impressed with on this bike is a brake here there's very little fork dive for a big bike you've got some but nowhere near as much as you might find on other machines and those brakes we've got a big twin disc Brembo's and a, a single at the rear and they're nice and powerful with my brake again there they're quite smooth they're quite progressive there's no too much of an initial bite but there's plenty of stopping power there and I do uh, I do like that with these big bikes if you're barreling along roads uh, even into triple digits and sometimes you do need a lot of stopping power and, and these truly really deliver and so as you the brakes like everything else on this Tiger, you know, it's premium quality kit. Uh, and the bike feels, it's fit and finish, feels like a lot of care and attention's gone into the bike. It's a quality piece of machinery. You know what one I'd feel proud to own. So is there anything else that sticks out about this bike? Well, just a few little bits. Uh, things like the rubber, mounts on the foot pegs i found incredibly slippery in these kind of cold wet muddy winter uh, so i've whipped them out straight away and uh, i've just gone with the serrated edges of the metal foot pegs and i much prefer that but they're nice and wide i feel feel planted and uh, and even when i'm i'm stood up you know there's plenty of plenty of real estate there to get my feet firmly planted on them We've got uh, Metzler Torrance tyres and those tyres are performing pretty well in keeping me upright on this uh, overcast winter's day. Uh, they're, uh, they're very much a road focused tyre. Uh, I think if I was going to take this bike off road on a day like today, I'd very much want to be invested in some uh, chunkier knobbly rubber because there is a lot of weight here especially with me on it in terms of suspension well there's uh, 200 millimeters worth of travel front and rear if that's not enough off for you there is uh, there is the rally explorer version with that 30 litre fuel tank uh, which will give you 220 millimeters but to be honest with you 200 millimeters on a bike that's mainly designed for road riding is more than enough but you know there's plenty there to get you along some gravel trails and even some uh, gnarlier little green lanes that are rutted and potholed if if you so wish and that is the joy of these big adventure bikes and, and this is the thing i probably love most about them is their versatility you know this thing really is designed with covering big distances in mind in comfort you know if i was buying this bike i'll be buying it because i want to have my wife on the back put on some metal luggage pack it full of things i don't really need for two three four weeks on the road and just head off strike out across europe ride lots of fantastic mountain passes and have a thoroughly enjoyable time exploring but we can't take off all the time so a big adventure bike like this has also got to be able to be fun on a Sunday ride or a weekend away. It's got to be able to whip through country lanes and, and keep up with your mates on sportier machines. If you've got friends on sportier machines, I actually don't. Um, and this Tiger 1200 will do just that. You know, it's powerful. It's well balanced. It's you know, certainly not a a flickable bike i'd say in the traditional sense but it's agile and uh, it really is a pleasure to ride slow speed maneuvers aren't a problem either it feels nicely balanced um, i do wish i could get my feet on the ground i have to admit uh, i imagine if i was riding off road on this bike and i found myself in a pretty tricky situation it'd just be nice to have both feet firmly planted but that can be the nature of buying an adventure bike is that you can't always do that.
So could I see myself buying a Triumph Tiger 1200 and in particular the GT Explorer? Well, I admit the answer is a resounding yes. It ticks a lot of boxes for me for the type of riding I do. I do a lot of long distance motorway work. Uh, and this thing is gonna eat up the miles in comfort. You know, I love the fact it's got a heated seat for me and my wife. I uh, love the fact that it's got this big adjustable screen with the wind deflectors to, uh, to keep the worst of the weather off me. Uh, and I like the fact it's got radar assisted cruise control, the blind spot indicators. You know, there's a huge amount going for this bike to just treat it as a road tour, and it more than matches dedicated road tourers. Um, but, you know, I also enjoy throwing a bike around a twisty mountain pass when I can, whether that's uh, in the Alps, in the Pyrenees, or close to home in Wales or Scotland. And, and a bike like this, you know, while it may be on the large side, it's quite happy twisting its way around fast snaking roads up mountain sides. Uh, and it's that versatility that I really enjoy. Um, if I was going off road, quite frankly, given the choice, I'd choose the smaller bike. But I would, you know, over, <laughs> over any bike, often the smaller bike, the smaller the bike, uh, the more fun you're going to have off road. But if you've only got one and you want to try exploring a few trails, or you're coming along to the Adventure Bike Rider Festival and you want to give the 20 kilometre adventure trail a go, you know, why can't some nobblies? And yes, you know, this bike will um, will be great at just having a poodle around and, and seeing what you can do. And if you are an experienced trail rider, then yeah, you know, you're going to have a lot of fun on this thing. And I was determined not to make this video a comparison piece between this and the GS Adventure. Now, it's difficult, it's been difficult to do that for two reasons. Uh, one, because, yeah, I spent last year riding a GS Adventure. And two, because Triumph hasn't been backwards in coming forwards about the fact that this bike is squarely aimed at people who might be thinking about buying a GS or a GS Adventure. You know, they've looked to take on the daddy of adventure bikes. Um, and they've done an absolutely brilliant job. You know, there's areas where I think this bike is better or exceeds the GSA, particularly when it comes to the amount of technology you get with it. Um, there's areas where it might not quite as match up. You know, it does feel slightly more tough heavy. It gives you a different riding experience compared to the GSA. But uh, do you know what? There are a huge amount of areas where this thing matches that bike. And both are brilliant machines and they both approach the big adventure bike category in a slightly different way, which is a great thing. Yeah, I really do. I really do enjoy this Tiger. I just want to throw some luggage on the back and disappear off for a few weeks, but I have got a magazine to write in the next issue of Adventure Bike Rider magazine, which you can uh, pick up by going heading over to www.adventurebikerider.com forward slash slash shop. With the Tiger 1200, Triumph has nailed it. And if you're in the market for a big adventure bike, then I highly recommend putting the Tiger 1200 on your test ride list. And talking of test rides, Triumph, along with the rest of the world's leading motorcycle manufacturers, will be at the Adventure Bike Rider Festival in June with their test fleets, so you can try them out and take them for a ride. Head over to www.abrfestival.com to get your tickets today. And as for me, well, I'll certainly be taking the Tiger 1200 for another spin.